What have I been sewing this year? Let's take a look. Welcome, I'm Akram Tagapi Birth, and you're watching Akram's Ideas Bringing Creative and Crazy Ideas to Life. I am finally getting around to sharing with you all the sewing makes that I've made so far for 2019. So this is primarily the stuff that I made in winter and um, a few early spring makes. I haven't been doing a whole lot of sewing between March and uh, May simply because of a big event that I was coordinating in April at work and so things had been really busy there so these makes for the most part are all January February and a handful of March makes so I thought I would share with you all of these before I get into my summer sewing plans because I do have plans for summer sewing. Hopefully plan to get started on those starting in June. To see more episodes like this, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to Akram's Ideas, and hit the bell icon to get notified of new episodes. So, with that said, um, one thing you'll notice is that we've got a different decor going on today. Uh, now that school is out, I have been doing a massive spring cleaning of my house and I've been reorganizing, rearranging furniture, and this is actually my auxiliary room or pattern room as my husband calls it uh, because I have two or I have three pattern cabinets on the other side of the room. This is also where I film all of my photos and pictures when I'm not in the sewing room. But I've rearranged one side of it to include this little love seat. And you could see a little bit more of this room in some of my um, Instagram TV videos that I've been doing. I try to do those on Wednesdays, kind of behind the scenes of Akram's Ideas. And I've shown some of the toy collection in this room. If you'd like a tour of my pattern auxiliary room, um, let me know in the comments below. But this video, this video is all about the sewing makes. So let's dive into it. The first item up uh, was something that I made in January in time for the bright, bright sewing, I think it was. It was a January sort of challenge to sew something bright and springy and pop of color in the midst of Drigger Yell January. And I had already planned on making this. I'd actually already cut it out. And I was just needing to sew it up. This is um, McCall's, I believe, 7129, which is a wrap skirt. I made it in this uh, pink floral and this sort of uh, pink washed denim look on the other side. The idea is this is a wrap skirt that is completely reversible, but the problem was is that I did not realize it. I was so anxious to get this skirt done that this pink stonewash uh, fabric on the other side has sort of a nap to it and I cut them out on the wrong sides and so it looks really wonky on the pink side that I can really only wear it on the floral side. So I'm kind of disappointed with that. The next thing I really wanted to make this winter with more sort of sweatshirts or sweaters that I could wear because I don't really have a lot of winter clothes that are me made. And so I knew that I really liked the toaster sweater and I decided to make more toaster sweaters. I went through my stash and tried to come up with the best fabrics to work for this. And the first one I had was this sort of stonewash um, khaki colored uh, fabric. It is the perfect weight. For this project it's kind of like a ponty um, it does have a little bit of stretch and then I had some neutral ribbing in my stash as well which was perfect for this once I made this I realized that I had enough fabric to make a matching skirt why not make a BB skirt from the Tilly and the Buttons um, stretch book and so that is exactly what I did so I made a BB skirt. I love this skirt pattern. It's quick. It's easy to make. Um, it worked out so well. Now I will say that I had a little snafu with this particular skirt is that I should have made the whole thing in the stonewash khaki because it had just the right amount of stretch 
for the skirt. But what I did to make it match is I used the ribbing for the waistband. And what happened is, is that the ribbing was way too stretchy. So while everything else fit, the waistband just like drooped. It didn't even fit me around the waist. And I'd already surged it together that I really didn't want to take off the waistband. So all I did was I unpicked one of the side seams of the waistband and ran elastic through it. And that's why it's got sort of this paper bag waist on it, which I'm not a fan of. But it fits perfectly now that I added the elastic waistband. And I typically wear this together so you'll never see the waistband underneath the sweater. And um, one of the things I love about this look is that it gives it such sort of a 1960s office set look. I, I And of course, when you pair it with like one of my vintage hats, I think the whole look gives a really vintage vibe, even though the toaster sweater is a very, very modern, um, pattern. It's a modern pattern. Speaking of the toaster sweater, I really like the toaster sweater because the fit is so good. I think I made a large, I want to say I made a large on these and the fit's so good that I just wanted to make another one and I had this pink, um, it's a uh, knit fabric. It has these little holes in it. I think I may have shown this in another video, like in my winter plans way back in December. Love the fact that this sweater is actually fairly lightweight, that it I wore, was able to wear it with um, sort of a tank or, uh, or a turtleneck underneath it when the winter time, and then I got to wear it through March as well, It because it's just so cozy, and I love this color. Nearing the end of February, I really, I'd come across some fabric in my stash I'd been hoarding for a while. I had my heart set on making a toaster out of it, which is this floral jersey. Oh, it's just so amazing. It's just the right weight. It's a um, sort of sweatshirting material, uh, but it has a little bit of stretch to it that it worked really well. The only problem I had is that I didn't quite have enough of the fabric and I was like freaking out because I knew I wanted to make a toaster. It had to be a toaster. So what I ended up doing was I added a back seam to the back of it. That way I was able to cut the back pieces and I think I have maybe like a an half inch seam allowance that I just surged up. You don't even notice it because the flowers kind of match up really well. Um, I had some rose colored ribbing that I used for the, the cuffs and the collar and the band. Now I will say the only other issue that I have with this, I love this so much, but I keep kicking myself because of the screw up that I made on the cuffs. So Originally, I was going to try to, well, originally I was going to make the cuffs out of the rose, but I only had just enough rose for the nick, the, the band, and not to do the double fold on the cuff. And so I was like, what am I going to do? Well, I had some small pieces of the rose fabric still left over that I decided to do the other side of the cuff in the rose. But it was late at night, I like it was like past midnight, and I wanted to get it done. And I just sewed up the side seams of the cuff on the wrong side and I didn't even think about it. So what's kicking me is that ideally if I had done this properly like I'm supposed to and have the seams on the inside, I would have been able to roll up the cuff like this and then you would have had just a sort of a rose shirt at that time, at that point. But because I didn't do that and I've surged it, I've got this weird seam. Granted, I could still wear it like this, but it just looks weird to me and I know it could have looked a lot better had I sewed it properly. So I'm just really angry about that. But otherwise, this is probably my favorite toaster yet um, because I just love this print so much. And it looks amazing with a pair of jeans. I'm Another um, item that I made, and I've made a couple, I've made, was it two or three now? Freya tops from the Tilling the Buttons stretch book. And it, I, I keep kicking myself because I don't do the proper fitting like I should. I still have that pooling on the arms, but what's worse is that this one's not as stretchy as my other ones. And so along my bust, it it's just a little tight. Um, now, while I was making this, I was actually also making the Francois dress, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, I had some accenting black uh, fabric that I was using on the Francois dress and I had just a little bit of it left and I thought I would make a BB skirt 
Um, here is the uh, black fabric and it's got a little bit of stretch but it just didn't have enough stretch so the the baby skirt was way too small but I did I wanted to salvage it somehow and I had a little bit of this fabric left that I made a paneled BB skirt with the black on the sides and then the uh, stripes in the center and I really like the way this looks I just don't like the way it fit this this fabric is just a little clingy and so with the tightness around the bust the tightness kind of on my belly here it's got a really nice 60s office pencil skirt secretary look um, it just doesn't look good on me and it looked even worse when I was taking photos and I tried to wear it out it just like brought attention to places I don't want to bring it attention to so while I like the idea and the style behind this I don't like this I think this is a total fail speaking of not happy with the Francois dress another dress that I'm totally not happy with and very upset it needs a full bust adjustment there's just nothing I mean there's no way around it it's t it's got a bunch of pooling around the arms and it is just too tight around the bust and this is a pink sort of waffle textured ponty and I, I had it in my stash I eliminated the zipper and just made it a little wider in the back or whatnot and of course I added the collar using that black ponty um, and I added some little cuffs to go with it and then after I added the collar I was like oh it needs some buttons for shaping here for some accent and so I had some little black buttons so I really love the look of this it just does not look good on me more importantly than anything it's just too tight around the arms the irony is is that I had a ton of that fuchsia pink left over that I turned around and made the Bunsen top from itch to stitch and that's the one that has the pleated uh, sleeves and these really nice sort of bishop style uh, into the sleeves um, this top fits perfectly for the most part uh, itch to stitch patterns are um, drafted for a C cup so that makes it already a win so it fits in this top one of the alterations that I had to make to it is because of the lack of stretch in the fabric and the thickness of this fabric I didn't do the double um, cuff I just did one layer of the cuff and did a hem on it uh, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get my hand through it at all because there's not as much stretch as I really wanted on here and so with that like I said I had a ton of pink fuchsia left I turned around and made a BB skirt and again well this doesn't have as much stretch this BB skirt I feel like fits perfectly and then paired with the Bunsen top it is just perfect I love the look of it um, I love wearing it with black accents. Um, I know fuchsia is maybe not a very vintage color, but I think the styling that I do with the accents and and everything, I, it gives it a little bit of a vintage style, especially with the pencil skirt and the black pumps and everything that I wear it with. But this was a win. There is a monthly sewing challenge that is hosted by Sewing on Tyne and the Voice of the Creative where they choose a print or fabric style that you have to make for the month and in February it was sewing with florals and I decided to make this beautiful honeycomb top out of this lovely lavender and yellow floral print I figured that this would be the perfect top to move into spring I originally wanted to make the honeycomb dress but I just did not have enough fabric and I was already settled that this fabric was a honeycomb I did make the longer sleeves because I wanted it to, again to be sort of early spring late winter um, that transition the other thing that I really like that I did this time around is that as you can see um, the underside of the fabric is just white and I never button the top part of the honeycomb it's got a mandarin collar and I always keep it kind of open the button placket on the honeycomb dress and top is self-faced so it's got an extension that you fold over a couple times so what I did is I sort of hacked away that portion and made a second version of the center front panels and I made that sort of as a facing so that I have the floral back 
so that it would open up properly and have that floral print versus just having a white print. And if you'd like, I could give you a tutorial about how I did that. It was super easy. Uh, so at the end of February, after that point, I really did not sew at all until spring break. So for spring break, I had to go to a conference in San Francisco and I had been gifted like four years ago some fabric that was a San Francisco print. My sister had visited some friends in San Francisco and she'd brought me back some fabric. So I'd been hoarding this fabric for a long time and I'd never been to San Francisco. So since I was going for this conference, I figured, you know what, I'm gonna make a top to take with me out of that San Francisco print. And in my stash, I had Simplicity 8445. And it had this really wide collar, it had grown on sleeves, it was exactly the style that I wanted for the shirt. The problem is, is that it had, it was made out of like two yards or something. I mean, I didn't have that much fabric. I had maybe a yard in a little bit and I knew it wasn't gonna be enough. So I started looking around my stash and I remembered that I also had the Libby shirt from Sew so Over It. And it had the grown on sleeves, it had a little bit of gathering in the back and um, basically I was like, maybe I can hack the Libby shirt to have the big collar. And that's what I did and I did several toils before I got to the San Francisco fabric. So the first toil was a total fail. I had to redo it all. Um, one thing that I ended up doing from the start is when I did the first toil of just a straight Libby shirt, it did not fit well. And I found a sew along on the Sew Over It website where they did a full bust adjustment. And so that was the first thing that I did. And that changed everything. So this is actually one of the first successful toils of the blouse and you can see the fit is amazing. I love the fit. After doing the full bust adjustment it worked out perfectly. What other things that I did is that I already knew that the Libby top was supposed to be sort of a crop top. So I added I think three inches to the blouse so it sits right at my hips. And a couple of other things that I did is I, I believe I added some tucks to the back of the, the shirt. I don't, I don't believe the tucks are actually in there. It's more of a boxy shirt, so more like 1980s, early 90s boxy style shirt. So I added the tucks on the back at the waist so that it'd bring it in a little bit more, but I still left the little gathering detail at the yoke of the back. Um, and so this is the sleeves that are on the Libby shirt. And then what I did is I basically just took the collar pieces from the Simplicity 8445 and kind of laid them out until I got it the way that I wanted it. And then on this particular one, while it works, I don't think I got the facing quite right. I ended up finding a threads tutorial that showed you how to do this all-in-one collar and um, or shawl collar and how to draft that. So I went back to the drawing board and kind of redrafted the collar ever so slightly, primarily the facing because the facing kind of sets up in this one. So once I actually got this fit right and I'm really happy with it, I did want to change the sleeves a little bit on this one and I didn't still feel prepared to cut into my San Francisco fabric. So. I made the polka dot version of this dress and what I did again is I basically just swiped the cuffs and sleeve from 8445 and laid it on top of this hacked up Libby that I already had and redrafted the sleeves ever so slightly so that they were a little bit wider. And then I made this little cuff part that was part of the 8445. And again, this took about a yard or less. So um, it was a really quick make. The fit on this one is also fantastic. Um, it, as you can see, I've actually paired my polka dot dress or my polka dot shirt 
with a polka dot skirt. In my stash I had Vintage McCall 6739, which was a reversible wrap skirt. Uh, similar to the McCall 7129, which is a modern pattern that I'd made a couple of times, only this one was different as it wraps in the back and it had more vintage details like giant pockets. But it is reversible and so now I have the black side that I could wear with my San Francisco shirt. So my San Francisco shirt, I opted to do the collar and the facing and the cuffs in white. The reason for that is that after doing the polka dotted shirt, I realized that the collar and the cuff details all get kind of lost when you're using a print, that it's not very noticeable. And I wanted the cuffs and the collar to really stand out on my San Francisco shirt. And as you can see, I just, I adore this um, fabric here and it's such a vivid black background. And it's got like, all things about San Francisco on it. And I will say I adore this shirt. I love the way it came out. And again, just I think just doing the full bust adjustment on the Libby hack made all the difference because those shirts fit fantastically. I did about three toils and then I did one, two test, um, wearable muslins I guess you could say before I actually got to the San Francisco shirt so it was a perfect fit now like I said it didn't take much fabric really uh, in comparison if I was trying to do the 8445 pattern so I had some San Francisco fabric left over that I made a matching purse and I love this purse I even managed to make a pocket right here on the front that you can't even see because it um, blends into the print. So it's kind of a hidden pocket detail. Um, I lined the purse with um, some red uh, sort of yellow daisy print fabric. I only had a little bit of this fabric left over. I'd made a purse for my mom a couple of years ago with this red fabric. And so I had a little bit left over and I made another little pocket on the inside and I used a tutorial. I'll put the link in the description below. I found it on Pinterest. It's actually a fairly simple um, purse pattern. Um, but what I did is I used a tutorial because it also had the tutorial for the little straps so that I could add, and this is, this is actually a strap from some luggage that I had that I just attached on there. But I added some uh, purse, the handles that I had so I can actually remove the straps and everything and then just use it with the purse handles but this bag was great for taking on an airplane when we were traveling because of all the pockets I could put my phone and my passport and everything right there and get easy access to it and it is actually really big I was able to fit my iPad in here and all my important stuff that I needed to carry with me um, in this bag and have it on me all the time. And with the, the big strap, I could wear it over my shoulder and didn't have to worry about um, losing my purse or anything. So that is the uh, San Francisco bag, or my travel bag as I call it now, that I love. The only really last item on my, uh, what I've been making uh, is one thing. So the last weekend in April, I just wanted to chill and I was trying to clean up the sewing room because I had made a huge mess after that binge sewing event. And I was reorganizing fabric and I came across this sort of tie dye, sand wash, I don't know what you call it, blue cotton. And my husband came in there and he's like, why don't you take a break from cleaning and just sew something really quick. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna sew. I don't have anything. And and he picked up this fabric that was just in a pile of my stash. And he's like, make something with this. And I looked at the fabric. I didn't have a lot there. And so this is it. This is all of that fabric for the most part. And I'm like, what am I gonna make? So I just randomly went into my pattern room. And I was like, the first top that I see that I kind of like or think will have enough fabric for that fabric, I'm gonna make. 
And what I found is that I had Simplicity 2188. It's a modern pattern. I think I may have bought it in one of these bulk pattern hauls um, from like an antique store where they give me the box for like $5. Uh, so it wasn't something that I was extremely um, ecstatic about and I didn't even think the style would work. But it was a super quick make and I didn't actually make any changes to this top. Um, and I, I, I didn't know if it was actually going to fit, but I will say this fits perfectly. So I think there's a lot of wearing ease, uh, and I'm just looking at the original pattern. I think there was a lot of wearing ease in it and this is even a little loose. So I could probably have gone down or brought it in a size. I typically style this with my, um, Simplicity 8019 skirt, which is a reproduction of the 1970s button down skirt. And I think it has a late 70s or early 70s vibe to it. I could probably style this a little bit differently, maybe even with a more A-line skirt and have more of a 40s look with this top. But I'm very happy with it. So those are all of everything that I made from January up until the end of April. Uh, if you've been watching my Instagram TV, I've been sharing some behind the scenes of Akram's ideas and I've shared uh, some of my sewing plans for the month of May, which was to completely sew all my UFOs. And that's I'm still wrapping that up and I am going to hopefully get the majority of my UFOs done before I start any summer sewing because I have this massive pile of clothes and purses and all sorts of things that I've already got cut out, already assembled in various uh, levels and they are taking up so much space in my sewing room that I am has sort of vowed not to make so anything new until I get those done. So wish me luck. So there you have it. There's all my sewing makes for 2019 as thus far. I'd love to hear in the comments below what you've been sewing. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Akram's Ideas and thanks for watching. <coughs> Hello and welcome. Do, 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 do. Let me see here. What is that pattern number? <clears throat> There's a monthly sewing challenge that is. <laughs>